Let's review the causes of the Industrial Revolution and figure out how we went from a world of farmers to a world of urban workers. So we're going to be looking at a few things in this presentation. Uh, technology, improvements in agriculture, population growth, factors of production, and the migration of people to urban areas. So let's start with improvements in farming. So one of the things we need to understand is that during this time, prior to the Industrial Revolution, farming is going to improve by using technology and better farming techniques. One of the pieces of technology is the seed drill, which was invented and developed by Jethro Tull in England in the uh, year 1700. And what it's going to allow us to do is essentially uh, plant our crops more efficient, more effective, and uh, more scientifically. And as his uh, invention improves, uh, it just gets better and better and better. So what we're going to see is the implementation of technology in farming, which leads us to more crops, which then produces more food, which leads to lower prices, which means more people can afford to eat better. People's diets improve, they become healthier, and we're going to see a rise in population. So all of this results in population growth. Also, in order to maintain the soil and uh, use the soil more effectively, we come up with a crop rotation system. So by rotating your crops from field to field uh, and better managing your soil, you're going to produce a wider variety of foods. Uh, you're also going to produce more foods because the soil is going to be healthier, which leads us to exactly what better planting does. More crops equals more food. More food equals lower prices. Lower prices equals more people can afford to eat better. People are healthier, and that results in population growth. We are also going to become better at raising our livestock. So livestock was not really raised to eat. Uh, they were raised to produce work on farms. So by breeding our animals, we're going to produce larger, uh, fatter, juicier animals that produce more meat and more wool. And the same formula fits here. More meat equals lower prices. More people could afford to eat better. Uh, an increase in protein from meat is going to make people healthier, which then results again in population growth. So by improving our farming, by improving our uh, raising of livestock, we do end up with an increase in population growth. And this is going to lead to an increase in demand for goods. More people means more goods. We need more things to uh, provide for these more people. And the other thing that's going to happen is the technology on the farms is actually going to replace workers. So people who had worked on farms and done work by hand are no longer needed. So the technology is going to replace the farmer. And essentially that person is going to have to go somewhere in order to survive. So we're going to see a mass migration of people from the farms to the cities because that's where the jobs are going to be. So we see some technology uh, connections here to improvements in agriculture, like the seed drill. Uh, we see improvements in agriculture is going to result in population growth and migration to urban areas. So if you follow the red lines, uh, hopefully you'll make those connections and be able to explain that. So we're going to jump into the factors of production because without the factors of production, there is no industrialization. So what are these factors of production? Uh, land, labor, and capital are sort of the big three. So let's look at each of these individually. Land is your resources and raw materials that you need to produce your goods, to build your machines, to build your factories. It's also water for a power source, as well as transportation of those goods that you're producing. If your country does not have the right resources, your country's not going to industrialize. The next of the big three factors of production is labor. You need a large population of workers and consumers, people to work in your factories and produce your goods, but also people to consume those goods as well. Without a large population of workers and consumers, you will not industrialize. And the third factor of production is capital. Capital is money that is invested to develop and to grow your business. Uh, capital is essential to industrialization, and essentially you can't do anything without it. So your country needs all three of these in order to industrialize. If you only have two of them or one of them, your country's not going to industrialize. There are other factors of production that are also very important, but without these three, it's not going to go any further. But if you do have these three, then you need entrepreneurs, you need management, you need people to start the business, to run the business. And it's also beneficial if you have a stable government that supports your business by passing laws, providing tax cuts, um, uh, colonies and 
the ability to export is also good too. But on this screen, you see the major three and some of the supporting ones. England is going to be one of the first countries to industrialize. And the question is, why England? Well, if you look, they have all of the factors of production and then some. From the large population to the strong economy, great natural resources, especially coal, which will be vitally important for powering the steam engine, a stable government without wars, um, a certain amount of freedom by the people in England, and colonies and trade overseas. So England has all of the factors of production, which allows them to industrialize and sort of take the lead in the Industrial Revolution. And England industrializes first in their textile industry. So the textiles are fabrics. And for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, everybody made textiles the same way. They did it by hand. Uh, spinning and weaving cloth was done on simple spinning wheels, as you can see here. And then the weaving of that thread into cloth or textiles was done on a hand-powered loom. Uh, and there's a problem with these. These are all run by people power. And people power is slow. People make mistakes. Uh, people power is also expensive. And that resulted in high prices. So as we produce our goods slowly, relying on people power, uh, it means that people can't really afford to buy those things. Everything is too slow. And as we already know, with population growth, we have a high demand. We need to speed up the process of making these textiles. Because let's face it, everybody needs clothes. So that brings us to a series of inventions that are going to be developed in order to meet the goal of speeding up production. Uh, the first one, the flying shuttle in 1733, uh, doubles the work of the weaver. Well, that means we have a now an increased demand for thread, so we have to figure out how to spin our thread faster. And that comes in 1764 with the spinning jenny, uh, which does eight threads at once. And now we are working faster. When we are working faster, we're working cheaper. Uh, the next thing we need to do is think about a power source. So again, people are slow. What else could we use? So we're going to use water, and the water frame was invented in 1769. That hooked up to your spinning jenny or your power loom and was run by a water wheel, so your factory had to be built next to a source of water. But we're going to learn that water power is not very effective or efficient, but it is faster than people. And then we're going to get to an invention called the spinning mule. Uh, again, using the water power to speed up the process. So we're going faster and faster and faster. Uh, this brings us to James Watt. So James Watt spent about 10 years taking this invention of the steam engine, which had already been developed, and making it more efficient and making improvements on it. Uh, the steam engine will essentially become our main power source of the Industrial Revolution. And to power the steam engine, we need coal. So the demand for coal creates a brand new industry. So we're going to have the coal mining industry because the steam engine needs coal. And then the factories need steam engines, which means we need more coal. So as more and more factories are built, more and more steam engines are built, and the demand for coal is going to increase. The steam engine will become the main power source of the Industrial Revolution. So we need lots and lots of coal, which means we need lots and lots of people to mine that coal, which is a very dangerous, dangerous job, one of the most dangerous you could get. And because the steam engine is so effect, uh, efficient and effective, uh, we decided to put it to work outside of the factory. So the locomotive is essentially a steam engine on wheels. This is going to allow us to transport our goods faster, farther, and cheaper, which means we can sell to more areas, which means we can produce more goods, which means we can make them cheaper and more people will want to buy them. And the locomotive creates a brand new industry uh, and increases the demand for things like coal and steel and iron and, of course, railroad construction itself. And then we decided to put the steam engine on a boat to make a steamship, uh, using the steam engine to power the ship. Again, transporting our goods faster and therefore cheaper. Faster and cheaper is the basic idea in any business. You want to be able to make your product faster and cheaper uh, so that you can produce more and sell more. And then back to the migration. So the farmers on the field have lost our jobs to the new technology and machines on the farm. They are going to begin to move into the cities and into the factories and become workers. So we're transitioning from a population of mostly farmers, subsistent farmers, who basically grew what they needed to survive, now to urban workers who are going to go work for someone else and earn a wage and make money. So those are all the things you need to understand about why the Industrial Revolution started, as well as how it started. So we had developments in technology, which led to improvements in agriculture, which resulted in population growth. Countries that had the factors of production could industrialize, and they were able to do so because there was a migration of people from, urban er from rural areas to urban areas.